Alright, so here we have the path for Fuzz Universe. Now this one has quite a lot of activations. The song itself is pretty long, like about five and a half minutes, even at 125% speed. So it opens itself up to a lot of activation uh, points, and also a lot of point loss, so uh, we'll get into that now. First phrase, fine. Second phrase, uh, a long blue-orange sustain, whammy it as much as we can, obviously. And our, our first activation point is a uh, is immediate. Now we have enough time after hitting this sustain uh, and whamming it to get our finger uh, back onto the button. Uh, we have an entire measure, in fact, so it's not really a problem to activate on the next note in this case. So this first activation is fine. Ideally, squeezing in this green note, uh, either or, squeezing the open or squeezing the green. Depends on whammy, of course, but um, even if I didn't get one of these two uh, squeezed in, it would only be a 200 point loss, and this song was never that close, because there's just so many points and notes in it. Anyway, second phrase, whammy whammy, a lot of whammy in this song, which sucked because a lot of the actual phrases were these short sustains like this, measure 44, all of these sustains are really short and at 125 speed especially so yeah getting good whammy out of this on an explorer with a latency is not easy to do so getting bad whammy could screw you over and that is the reason why I delayed this activation here anyway because we have a double overlap and we don't want to miss either of the overlaps here and yeah so I was delaying from this red strum to the green strum so three notes lighter just to make sure that we overlapped uh, uh, each phrase here and there is another whammy phrase here this all this first overlap is fine actually it's it's basically just getting this second overlap that's uh, the deal breaker whammying this one another really short sustain but just making sure we hit the phrase and ideally getting the overlap and missing the overlap here I don't know what path that would put you on it would screw you over so yeah, definitely best to uh, just delay it a little bit. And normally I could sometimes even squeeze in up to the yellow note, so I don't even think it lost that many points, if any, delaying it by that much. But what is it? It's 16th notes at the same tempo, so yeah, it doesn't lose any points. Perfectly fine delaying that. This phrase, this whammy, uh, you know, considering we're tapping this bit, Maybe at regular speed it would be one-handable, but there's no way I'm going to be one-handing these trails at 125 speeds. So a lot of whammy is lost uh, on this system, so I'd probably only ever get the tail end of it. Uh, and that's just the way it was for that one, unfortunately. Then we have a regular whammy here, some more short whammies here. And then we get to our next activation. So this one uh, is not so bad. We just, we get this uh, long hammer on string and what I was waiting for I was waiting for this red yellow orange yellow red this little zig here and instead of activating the orange I don't I don't know if this was for overlap reasons it might have been but uh, I delayed it to this blue note here so after I hit the red I would activate on a blue note here not too hard to remember and we'd probably still we'd overlap obviously and then probably still end at about the same point because Getting perfect whammy uh, was not going to happen, especially, I mean, it was literally never going to happen because of this uh, this phrase here. So yeah, kind of necessary to delay this. And yeah, ending right here was always cool because you end right as the fast part ends. It makes you feel like you've got a perfect act. So that was always cool. Anyway, next activation. We have another short-ish whammy here. And we have another short whammy here. And then we have our activation points. So, this one I only delayed by one note, and the reason for that was just because I wanted to activate on a down strum. So, yeah, we're, we're just basically sacrificing 200 points for this one. Because, uh, I mean, delaying it is definitely better than doing it earlier, because the notes here at the end are faster than the notes at the beginning. So, yeah, that delay, considering I'm not going to get perfect money. Uh, worked out. And yeah, there's no overlap or anything in this phrase, just a case of hitting the notes and activating the right time. So, next phrase. 
this this one uh, I sacrificed some on as well. So I'd whammy this first red, and then I would not be whammying this second red. And the reason for that is basically after I hit this little yellow blue yellow, I'm transitioning to elbow strumming to prepare myself for the trill. So I wouldn't be able to whammy this note. So that was just another case of it sucks, but I'm losing some money. Nothing could be done other than trying to do a fast teleportation thing, which I'd rather not do because it, le it opens yourself up to missing. And if you do miss, then you screwed yourself twice because uh, you've not uh, prepared yourself to tap and you've missed the phrase as well. So just sacrificing this little bit of army was, was worth it, I think, in the long run, for consistency's sake. So yeah, one phrase with a some whammy, but not all of it. Second phrase, getting as much whammy as possible out of these relatively short sustains. Same deal with the third one. And now this f uh, activation I delayed by a decent amount. If I got good enough whammy from uh, all of these phrases, I would go for this uh, second yellow. Otherwise I would go for the third uh, yellow, sorry, second orange. Otherwise I would go for the third orange right here. Uh, never this early, because it's another double overlap phrase. It's actually a triple overlap. Like, when does that ever happen? That's insane. But, I mean, it helps that the star power phrases are so close together. But, you know, just just a cool little thing. So, yeah. Uh, overlap, Overlapping this phrase. It's a really short phrase, but your star power can just run out one or two notes shy if you activate it too early and you don't get good enough whammy. Cons uh, especially with this phrase right here, because it's much like the phrase from like right at the beginning of the song all really short sustains so you, and you can't really tell if you're hitting it very well because um, you'll be under star power so you won't be able to see the notes turn blue or white or whatever colour your zones happen to be um, so yeah this overlap there's no whammy in it and this overlap you just get the, get the overlap and if you don't get this overlap you are missing out on a decent amount of points but you could probably just uh, what I would do if I missed the overlap, I would activate a bit earlier on this activation. Uh, so you'd you'd lose points for sure, but it's not the end of the world. Like missing some overlaps can be like it's not like laces out done where if you miss the overlap, it's over. You're just missing out on this uh, shreddy bit here. But anyway, ideally we'd get this overlap and we'd end around here. Next phrase, four note phrase, dead easy. Then we have another whammy. This is basically the, exactly the same as the intro. Long sustain. And the activation point says, like, this note, which is a really arbitrary note, it seems. I think that's even, that's on an upstrum, even. So I wasn't doing that. I was either trying to activate straight away. In, in fact, yeah, I was basically just getting the phrase and then trying to activate uh, as soon as I could in this open note, but and we wouldn't really lose any points because we're just getting more sixteenths in exchange for sixteenths at the end. It would just be like a tick really we'd miss out on. So yeah. Same as the first activation basically. Okay, and yeah we don't want to do it too late either because we do not want to overlap this phrase. Because that uh, that really does kill. Uh, at least the last last activation. You wouldn't get enough star power from this one to activate the end. So speaking of that, we want to be whammying this. And then our final phrase is this strumming into a sustain. Now, probably worth whammying the sustain just to try and get these la this last couple of points uh, from this uh, three note chord. Not necessary, but uh, I would always go for the whammy. So it ends in a down strum, which is nice. So I'd have my finger wrapped around the whammy bar as we're strumming through this. Uh, and then yeah, just hit the rest of the phrase and the activation point is after the long orange sustain and this blue is a strum so yeah and then we try, I try and squeeze in these last two notes it's, I don't know if I would often get both of them at least get one of them though uh, so yeah, and that would be the end of Fuzz Universe, what a mouthful 864k best I ever got in practice was 860, I would normally be hitting 858 to 859 in runs. So yeah, that is Fuzz Universe. So 10 minutes talking about that. There really is a lot going in in that song. 
in terms of path and nodes. So speaking of the nodes, we'll get over that to that now. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the notes for Fuzz Universe 125. Now this song, a bit like Track on Fire, had a lot of notes and as a result a lot of parts where I developed like consistent methods. Nothing was too over the top, nothing too hard in it. So yeah, you can draw parallels between this and any of the songs that are kind of long. Most of the time in this tournament, if a song was long, it wouldn't have a standout hard part. And if it was short, it would have like one really hard part. Uh, but yeah. We'll just go into it and I'll talk. I'm not going to be covering every single section because not every single section is actually hard, but some of them do have stupid parts in it. So, right, it's actually kind of long as well, it sucks. The first part I want to talk about is right at the end of this bridge one here, and this happens twice. Right, so, this part here, we're transitioning from a strum to this uh, bit at the top. Unfortunately I can't slow it down, but, um, so we strum this red and then I'm going to be in basically position 2.5 at this point and then we're going to be shifting in a third position to hit this uh, tappy bit. So yeah, hammering on the blue and releasing and then double one handing a zig at the top for this first one. After that it's just alt tapping zigs. So insert. As far as the last note goes as well it's probably better to one hand that note. So it'd be a double one hand because the transition back to strumming as well because we, we want as much score as possible we want it to be holding this blue as long as possible. So better to one hand the last one. And this was pretty consistent. The main worry with this is like missing the frets. As it is quite a tri quick transition. But the method works fine. And it's a lot better than the standard tapping in this case, because it's kinda quick. Although you could do it, but that teleport is really quick. So yeah. Giving ourselves time to transition up. And that's that. Now, the next part is actually in the chorus, and it's these trills, these this long drawn out trill. So, to tackle these, after that hook, that yellow, blue, yellow, I would start elbow strumming. I know I didn't there, but that's what I would do. I'm actually going to start this trill in third position. and then slide down for the red, yellows and green reds. As far as the trill goes itself, it's just standard alt tapping trill. Right, and that happens twice as well. A lot of things in this song happen twice. That lick there is kind of quick, so... For that, I'm going to be ghosting a few notes. So you see there where it goes from uh, yellow to orange, we're just going to be ghosting a blue there, and the same thing again when there's a yellow to orange again, we're just going to be ghosting two blues there. Almost feels like mooting the dog player is, you know, accurate. And then there's another chill at the end of it, but you have more time to prepare for this one. I would one hand the first. Two, and then it ends on a ends on a fretting tap. But we have enough time to prepare for this one. Okay. So that's the chorus part. Uh, nothing guitar solo one is not particularly hard, but it is kinda quick. All I did for this one was uh I was I one handed it and just did a lot of sliding. So right here it gets quick. But uh, yeah, I just avoid first position. 
except for the quads, because we can do those in first position. But yeah, this part. I could have tapped it easily, but I felt really comfortable with one-handing it. So I just opted to stick with the one-handing, because it worked. Yeah, very, like, getting out of first position as soon as we can, besides the quad part. Okay, so one-handing that part. Nothing too much to say there. Guitar solo 2. Using some liberal ghosting, hitting these hooks as quad zigs. Just ghosting the blue between the yellow and orange. And then those triplets at the top there, we're just hitting those as zigs as well. Okay, so that's our first part. Some ghosting involved, but what can you do? It's easier than tapping, it's easier than um, you know hitting it accurately. Because when it gets to such a speed, it, it can become awkward, and you sort of inadvertently do this ghost note anyway. Oh God. Yeah, it's just it conserve your stamina. It just makes it easier in every regard. Right, and then this is a bit like superheroes. Paul Gilbert again, but I would um, one hand this blue while elbow strumming, and then tap afterwards. I'm just tapping the highest note here in first position. Because you could one hand it, but it just didn't. It's kind of quick at the end, and uh, you know, tapping is free for this section, so why not? So, yeah, one handing the first bit and tapping the second bit. Bridge 4 once again has that tapping bit at the end. It's exactly the same as it is in the first part, so I'm not going to go over it. Chorus 2 does have variations from Chorus 1. The first drill is the same. I ignore this one as I said in the past part. Trill is the same. Then we have an advanced lick here. And you see I tapped the bits at the top that time. The swimming ends on a down. Just tapping those ones. We, get, we give ourselves plenty of time to move our arm up there. And then the rest of it is one handable pretty comfortably. So yeah, just a little consistency measure. Because although it's the same pattern as a uh, as the first chorus, this is later on in the song. And it's just so so easy to tap that. And then the trill at the end, it starts off quicker, but we can still do our double one hand at the beginning, and then snap onto the trill by tapping. And obviously ends on the threatening hand again. So yeah, verse 3 is, is pretty much fine, we just have these these zigs. They generally just stay in the position they are. We have that bit where it goes uh, in the triplets as well, but you don't even really need to ghost the blues hit that. It doesn't happen for very long. So the verse 3 is actually fine. I don't even know why I played it, to be honest. Right, guitar solo 3. We're going to be tapping this to start off with. Then one handing here. Anchoring green for this part makes it a lot easier. Anchoring green for that. And we're going to be one handing all of this. A lot of sliding for this part. And that part at the end is kind of quick to be one handing, but it's not that hard. Just throw your hand at it and it'll probably hit. <laughs> There'll be some inadvertent ghosts in that. But nothing that I like planned out. So yeah, it's basically just because there's a mini trill at the top of that. But we've been there's a few mini trills in the songs that we've one hand already, so why not continue the trend and one hand that one too? So there's one more thing. 
And that's going to be verse 4, I believe. So this is maybe the standout hardest part of the song. Maybe. I don't really know. It's, it's certainly the part that lasts the longest. So it starts off the same as it has done for the whole song, but it gets fast. Now, at the start I was one-handing this part, which is a viable method, but there is a lot of sliding, and it's a bit uncomfortable because it's right at the end as well, so you're going to be... The mindset's going to be a little bit different, especially if you're on AFC in a tournament or whatever. Okay, so instead of doing that, I do what I do a lot of the time, and I stand up in first position. That's how it's hit. Well, I mistap there, but it's the same thing. It's pretty consistent doing it this way. If you're good at reading it anyway. So instead of sliding between green and red, or oh, we're actually uh, just anchor switching with two different things this time. And as a general rule, we're going to be tapping blue, uh, yellow, blue, uh, then blue, orange. Except when it gets at the top, it changes a little bit. Like there's two oranges in a row, whatever. But generally speaking, it's yellow, blue, blue, orange. See, I'm focusing on looking at the thing, so I'm not looking at the notes there. That ends on a down strum. And there's a bit of a troll star power phrase after that. Because it goes from taps to strum notes during a star power phrase, and that can like sort I can sort of hide the strum notes. So right there. The first four are taps and then it goes to strums. So I had to mentally know that, because otherwise, you know, the textures are pretty similar, so it's hard to tell. Uh, but yeah, that is the last thing in the song. So yeah, that's Fuzz Universe. I thought it would take longer, but I, uh, there actually aren't that many hard parts as it turns out. But yeah, uh, we'll do a run of the song now.
Okay, so that was Fuzz Universe 125, 858, about average, 859 I think, I hit in the tournament and then 860 was I think the best I did in practice, uh, but anyway that's that. Next song is Groundhog 115. <laughs> 